Amen. Great to see everybody tonight. We're going to worship our God. We're going to um, declare war. We're going to sing that song, Let the Wind Blow. Let the Wind Blow. Oh 
welcome you out. You're in a great, great place. Uh, we want to take time and pray. We want to take time and lift up uh, our need before God. We want to take time and, uh, and pray over the service in prayer in just a moment. But we want to lift our needs and speak to God. I've got a few things here I'd like to uh, invite you to agree with me upon. Obviously, pray whatever God has got. Uh, on your heart right now tonight, pray for that. But I uh, want to pray for healing, for salvation, for uh, for Bill, for Lyndon and Ken. Want to pray also for um, uh, for Lee as well. Want to pray also Pastor Dexter and Natalie for healing. Want to pray for B for healing. I uh, want to pray for our mother church in Bustleton. The grace of God upon that work there. God's blessing, God's favour, God's fruitfulness upon that church. The Manukau Church want to lift up uh, Pastor Stevens. Um, and his family and also for the saints there in the Manukau Church for a building. They're looking for a new building and uh, God help them. want to pray for the Reddies and the congregation there in Hornsby and also for the McLeans in Poland and want to pray personally, God, fruitfulness in my life, fruitfulness in your life, fruitfulness for us as a church. Let's pray. God, give us fruitfulness by the Holy Ghost and uh, let's pray for this service as well tonight. God, speak something to my heart. God, help me direct my life right now where I'm at. And I believe that God is faithful and God will speak something to your heart in the midst of that. Can you get Josh to open us up in a word of prayer in just a moment? Let's take time and pray. Father, we're so blessed to be able to come and God and pray anywhere, anytime, about anything at all, Lord God. God, we have specific needs. Lord God, we're praying for our city, God, the city of Newcastle, God, we're praying for our state, for our nation, God, we're praying, God, for your grace. Pour out your spirit on this earth right now, Lord, we pray, God. God, people in brokenness, God, people in lostness, Lord God, we want to pray. God, use God, our Lord. In whatever way you can use our lives, God, to make a difference in the gospel, God, a difference for eternity for people's lives, Lord God. We lift up churches to name your name and preach your word. God, we pray, God, bless you, God. Churches and church, God, will know the grace of God, the hand of God, the face of God, the truth 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 of God, God, we do lift these needs before your throne tonight, uh, and I pray your hand will be upon God, our baby churches, God, for provision, God, for this supernatural battle that we're involved in at the moment, God, we lift up right now this city of Newcastle, God, as a church, God, we intercede, we stand in the gap for those who refuse to pray for themselves, God, as we're engaged in this warfare, I'm asking that you would move your hand powerfully in the spiritual realm, God, we lift up this service tonight, speak to us a word in season, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. come on, praise God. Great to see you in church tonight. Give someone a nod, give someone a wave, welcome somebody out, let them know that it's safe. We're glad you're here tonight. Praise God. A couple of announcements. We have regular services, 10.30 on uh, Sunday morning, 6.30 Sunday evening, um, 7 p.m. Wednesday night. Always open an hour before for prayer. Uh, this Sunday we have an hour, a Bible hour at 9.30. And I uh, invite you to come out for that. This is uh, also an impromptu Friday night prayer night. Um, at the Leggett's house, Friday night prayer night at the Leggett's house, and uh, that's the, the handsome gentleman at the back there. If you want to find out details, you can see him. Um, and I, I assume that there'll be, uh, you know, people fasting on Friday and praying. We've got a week of prayer and fasting. If you're able, that'd be awesome to um, fast. But uh, you definitely can pray, and uh, we're going to take an hour, just six o'clock till seven o'clock, to pray. So I encourage you to be there promptly. Um, and uh, and then we're going to eat some food, but the food's going to come with you and it's going to come with me. And so if you can bring something, contribute something, uh, that would be a blessing and that'll be a good time on Friday night. Praise God. We're going to take an offering and uh, God is faithful to us. All of our provision has come down from above. It's come from his hand. We want to give back to him. We want to give and invest into his work, uh, the local church, and uh, appreciate everyone's giving. We're giving via EFT at the moment. I uh, appreciate your faithfulness in that arena. And um, I'm going to ask Mick just to pray a prayer over this offering in, in Jesus' name. Next. God, I pray for your hands to be upon these tithes and offerings, God, that you will multiply them, God, that you will bless this church, God, bless the local work here, God, for your kingdom. I pray, Lord, that you will bless the gift and the giver in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
We're going to look at the Word of God tonight, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, for many, it's uh, their well known verses, but uh, uh, I believe that uh, it's a timely word and it's going to be helpful for you, me, and uh, for those of you tuned in um, via the live stream. God bless you. And uh, one man said, This is two most important spiritual disciplines in the Christian life are uh, devotion to God's Word. Reading the Bible, the Word of God. The Word of God is uh, the Word of God. It's, it's a pretty profound statement, but it is. And uh, therefore, we'd be wise to, to uh, pay heed to that, take heed to that. And Jesus said, if you listen to my words, put them into play. It's like someone building on a foundation of rock as opposed to somebody who rejects and uh, disregards and they're building on the sand. When the storm comes, it makes all the difference in the world. And so uh, uh, this man said this, this uh, Bible commentator, he said, two most important spiritual disciplines in the Christian life are devotion to God's word and prayer. Without a thorough commitment to these two disciplines, a Christian will find it very difficult to make progress in his spiritual life. I believe that's entirely true. I want to look at uh, Matthew chapter 6, going to start in verse 6. Matthew 6, beginning in verse 6. A sermon I've entitled, How's Your Prayer Life? How's Your Prayer Life? Tonight, Matthew 6 and verse 6. But you, Jesus speaking, when you when you pray, go into your room and when you've shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place and your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. Verse 7, and when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they'll be heard for their many words. Verse 8, therefore do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Verse 13, and do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know about you, but um, that's, uh, you know, it's the Lord's Prayer, obviously, there. It's not something that we just uh, repeat by rote. It's not something we just stick up on the wall and think it's going to do something for us on our wall. Um, but when you read that, it, it reminds us that God's in charge. It reminds us that we have a Father in heaven. It reminds us uh, of his glory and his power and his kingdom forever and ever. And so I don't know about you, but it gives me great confidence. It gives me great peace when I remember who it is that I'm praying to. So I want to look at a couple of things with you tonight. And I'm going to kick off the basics of prayer. The basics of prayer. And so people do a first aid certificate or in fact, uh, my brother-in-law is an uh, ambulance uh, educator and so he educates or uh, does refresher courses for ambulance officers. And you think, well, ambulance officers, they know what they're doing. And they do. But they need to be reminded and they need to be refreshed. Why? Because it's important that they get it right. It's important because their job is literally saving lives or at the very least uh, helping people. And, uh, and prayer saves life, and at the very least, it helps people. Yes. And uh, we need to be prayers. We need to make a difference in our prayer life. And, uh, you know, it's like people that have been married for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, go to a marriage seminar. Why? Because they need a refresher course. They need some ongoing teaching. And so maybe you're a prayer. Maybe you pray every day. Maybe you pray twice or thrice a day. And uh, God bless you and good on you. But uh, let me just remind you these basics of prayer that uh, really help us. Like the foundations of your house, you've got to make sure, okay, they're stable, they're straight. The house is not toppling. It's not moving. The, the walls aren't cracking the ceilings not the cornices and coming down because we've got the foundations in place and so here's a brief prayer refreshing course and let God speak to you tonight number one basics of prayer number one what is prayer prayer is simply conversing with God that's a great definition isn't it Amen. it's just speaking to God it's just talking to our Heavenly Father. It's communion with God. And, you know, we talk to people all the time. We speak, I don't know, there's statistics there. I don't know how accurate they are. But uh, how many words on average we speak a day? Lots. You know, how many calls and how many people we speak to? Lots. And, uh, you know, husband and wives talk together. Friends talk together. People at the shops talk together. And prayer is just doing with God what you do with people all the time. But it's a bit more important. 
So prayer is talking to God. Number two, when should we pray? When? When should we pray? Um, you know, Jesus told a parable to show that at all times we ought to pray and not lose heart. And uh, the Bible says also that uh, we should pray without ceasing, ongoing, continual, often prayer. The apostle prayer would often begin his letters saying that he was praying always for them and that he did not cease to pray for them and that he prayed for them night and day. And uh, Jesus was a prayer. The apostle Paul was a prayer. You and I, we should be able to pray. We don't have to pray long, lengthy prayers. We don't have to pray necessarily in a in a certain position or posture, but we need to be people that pray. We talk to God. We converse with him all the time. And so, number three, what should we pray about? And the Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6, we should pray about everything. We should pray about all things. Yeah, there's nothing that you can't talk to God about. There's nothing that is beyond his concern or care in your life. There's nothing that's beyond the reach of his influence or power in your life. How should we pray? Well, in our text, it uh, tells us how not to pray. He says, don't use meaningless repetitions. Don't, don't, I've talked recently about prayer. We can we have a prayer room there. We pray before service. And I'll be honest, there's times I'm in prayer and I'm, I'm, I've, I've disconnected. There's been a disconnect in the head. But the, the, the jaw's still working. The mouth's still working. And, and it's like a little bit like the outboard motor. It's like, but it's in idle. It's not going anywhere. And God knows it. He's sort of, what are you doing, bro? You know, he wants to get your attention. It's like, yeah, just chill. You just be quiet rather than just dribbling at me. And, uh, and or the aim uh, to be seen of men. You know, Jesus said that the religious dudes of his time used to pray lengthy, powerful prayers and, uh, you know, stand up at the table and, uh, you know, make a big uh, oration of their prayers so that everyone would go, wow, he's a prayer man, isn't he? You know, and, and, and God wasn't impressed with that sort of um, attempt at impressing people with your prayers. And we pray publicly. We can't always pray in secret. We do pray publicly with the Bible. Many, many, many public prayers. There's prayers you pray with other people around. There's prayers you pray in the congregation. There's prayers you pray in front of the whole, you know, the, the elders of the, of, of the city sort of thing. There's big prayers and it's like, a, and you do pray with that in mind that people are going to listen, but your, your aim is to talk to God still. And we can't allow ourselves to get disconnected from talking to God even though there's other people around. And so we shouldn't do those sort of things. But there's some ways the Bible tells us, and particularly in the New Testament, gives us some real clear guidelines, some real clear understandings. And there's, there's many more where people write books on this stuff. I could preach for 10 hours and we're not going to tonight, aren't you glad? A um, couple of things, important things. We should pray with faith. And the Bible says, Matthew 21, 22, all things you ask in prayer, believing you will receive. And the Bible says if you, if you don't have faith, you're not going to receive. If you're double-minded, you're not going to receive. You're not going to serve. We need to pray with faith. So we're talking to God, believing that God has the power to do something. We need to pray according to the will of God. 1 John 5, 14 said, This is the confidence which we have before him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And so we need to know that we're praying. How do we know it's the will of God? Um, well, you can get a, a witness by the Holy Spirit, but also it's like it, it, the, the, it falls into the guidelines of the Word of God. I've heard people pray for all sorts of stuff. So that's not his will, bro. Um, we need to pray in the Holy Spirit. And so we understand we believe speaking in tongues is powerful. We believe that that's a prayer language that God gives to us and a praise language. Jude 20 says, But you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Romans 8, 26 and 27 says, The Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints, that's you and me, according to the will of God. And so God can help us with regard to our prayer by the Holy Spirit. We need to pray clearly. Part of our prayer is we come with thanksgiving. And uh, Colossians 4, 2, devote yourselves to prayer, keeping alert in it with an attitude of thanksgiving. That's a great translation of that verse. An attitude of thanksgiving. That's something I need to remember in my prayer time. Because sometimes you get frustrated. Sometimes you're praying for things you've prayed for before and it hasn't happened. Sometimes you're praying for things that are actually grievesome. Someone else's situation or your situation is like, this is bad. 
In fact, this ticks me off. This frustrates me. I'm, I'm not happy about this. And, and we need to, you know, you, you can express emotion before God. But the Bible says, listen, devote yourselves to prayer. Be alert. Maybe be alert to yourself as well. Um, with an attitude of thanksgiving. And it's like I need to mix a bit of thanksgiving in with my cake to make it sweeter. You know, if it's going to be palatable. If God's going to look on that and go, yep, yeah, cool, I'm hearing you, bro. Um, and also then we can pray with fervency. The Bible says that the, the fervent prayer, and the word fervent means the active, efficient, effective prayer. And, and the word fervent literally is the word energia, which means work or effort or put energy into it. And so it's not just, uh, you know, but some people say they pray silently. And you can absolutely pray silently, but the Bible's filled with prayers that people utter, they speak them out. And the Bible even speaks about Elijah's prayer as, as a fervent prayer. It's, it's got a bit of oomph to it, it's got a bit of passion involved in the prayer. It's, it's an active prayer. It's, it's like, I'm going to pray. And, uh, and it's a focused prayer. And so there we go, we've got a few foundational helps already tonight, um, reminders tonight. I pray with faith. I don't really need to believe what I'm praying about. And if I don't, maybe I need, the Bible says faith comes by hearing the word of God. It comes by reading the word of God as well. And you, you read it or you hear it and it's like, well, I'm believing for healing now because I've been reading about it. I'm believing for provision now because I'm believing about it. I'm believing for a miracle turnaround in my circumstance because I'm reading about a miracle turnaround in someone's circumstance. And so faith can be triggered and we can now, we've got a confidence and a faith, a supernatural thing that can happen to us as we read the Word of God. The Bible says the Word of God's a seed and it germinates in our heart and it produces something. It produces faith, produces fruit as well, but it produces faith. We need to pray according to the will of God. Is my prayer in line with the Word of God or is it out of line with the Word of God? Um, is, it, is there some Holy Ghost uh, uh, leading there? Is uh, you know maybe some leading of some wise counsel that, that can help you find the will of God? It needs to be in the Holy Spirit. We can uh, you know, pray in tongues, um, be led by the Holy Spirit. Ask the Holy Spirit as you pray to, to, what do you want me to pray about? Is there someone? Is there something? God wants to speak to you in the prayer time. I'm going to touch on this just a little bit more later, but it's like he wants a dialogue, not a monologue. You know, he wants to he wants to have a relationship with us. That's what Christianity is all about, relationship with God through Christ. He wants us to pray with fervency, be for effort. It's good to put a bit of effort into your prayer life. It doesn't mean that you're going to move God if you jump up and down and get super loud. I'm not saying that. But there's something about fervency that makes a difference. With thanksgiving, make a list. If you struggle with that, make a list. Why, why, am, I, why am I thankful again? <laughs> That's right, I've been saved from hell. That's right, I have eternal life. Oh, thank God I've been forgiven of all my sins. Thank God there's fruit, there's hope. There, it's like thanksgiving, thanking God in advance, thanking God for what he's done in the past, thanking God for the things that he's got happening for you and then being alert, being focused in your prayer. So second tonight, I want to move on and look at the problems of prayer. There's problems with prayer. We, we, we have difficulty with prayer sometimes. If we're honest, it's not, it's not just like every day you wake up and you go, bing, it's like, no, I'm going to pray. It's like I'm usually thinking lots of other things before, before I pray and then maybe the second cup of coffee starting to... Um, according to one national survey, Christians pray an average of five minutes a day. That's a problem. I think if, if we're people that we pray continually... <laughs> Adds up to five minutes. Martin Luther was a great prayer and he said this, he said, uh, as it is the business of tailors to make clothes and of cobblers to mend shoes, so it is the business of Christians to pray. And uh, I thought about that and I thought if it's the, the business of Christians to pray and we only pray five minutes a day, we're probably going to go out of business. <laughs> <laughs> the business is not going to be a successful business, is it? You know? One man said, every Christian knows that he should pray and in his heart he wants to pray. We all believe in prayer, but many are really bad about prayer in actual practice. You've got to be intentional about prayer. There's no other way about it. You maybe need, need to be reminded on a Wednesday night at church about prayer. 
that'll help you because we want to pray and, and, and we desire to, we know we should, we believe in it, um, but, but sometimes we're not that great and it's our prayer life has you know ebbs and flows and sometimes we have a season we're really busy or whatever happens, there's a lot of reasons why we become uh, slacker or we slacken off or we struggle with prayer. And so I want to look at a couple of areas, a couple of things, reasons why we struggle with prayer tonight. Is anyone awake? Is anyone with us tonight? Yeah. Thank God. Um, number one reason why we struggle with prayer is, ready for it? Busyness. We're too busy. We're just busy. I don't know what we're busy doing, but we're busy doing it. We're busy. You know, it's like I had a little spring go ping on my clutch. I've got a manual car and uh, the clutch... Uh, you know, it uh, it, it springs. Uh, it, it high, actually, this spring holds it down. Now my clutch is going bing and, and coming up too high. I heard this sort of bing noise. I'm what, what's going bing in my car? And all of a sudden, the clutch is like higher, and some of my knees sort of hitting me in the jaw when I'm, I'm letting the clutch out. And I'm thinking, my goodness, I've got to get this fixed. I spent hours, and the result of me spending hours is I don't have it fixed, and I don't know where to get one. I can wait four to six weeks and get one from Japan. I tried to buy one online from Malaysia, but they wouldn't let me put my phone number or address into their website. It's like, see, I spent hours. It's like, what are, you, what are you busy doing? I'm trying to get a spring for my clutch, you know? It's like, <laughs> just went bing, and then some of the hours have been... And there's all sorts of things going on in life that, that are more important than that, but take our time, and we get really busy. And the busy, busyness of our job, the busyness of our, you know, maintaining our health, the busyness of studying, the busyness of family, the busyness of church, the busyness of kids. Imagine that, you're so busy with church, you haven't got time to pray, or, you know, <laughs> I'm maxed out now, I can't pray. How come I'm going to church too much? And, but what, what I want to say is you must prioritise prayer. Amen. You must prioritise prayer. And what will help us is pick a place and a time and commit to it. People prioritise, you know, getting fit and so they go to a gym or they, they play some sort of sport or they do something somewhere, sometime, and having a bit of a schedule, a prayer schedule will help you. It's your, it's your call, whatever time works for you, whatever, you know, place works for you, or maybe it's driving in the car, maybe whatever it is. But I recommend that we, we pray often and, and all the time because you can pray anywhere. Um, but pick a place and a time and, and have a set aside time spend some time whether it's five minutes ten minutes two hours um, spend some time with God speaking to him number two is distractions and busyness is a distraction obviously to prayer but there's distractions in your mind I don't know about you but you can be sitting in a prayer room at the appointed hour this is my time I'm going to pray I've set aside an hour I'm going to sit down and pray, and then suddenly my head is, is like it could be it could be in Hawaii, it could be uh, it could be in Coles in the confectionery aisle, it could be anywhere. You know, it's like my goodness, I'm supposed to be talking to the Creator of all things about the issues that are really important in my life and in other people's lives, and yet my head is somewhere else. My goodness, help! And you got your thoughts are wandering. And then we finally realise that we're supposed to be pr- praying. We, we, we beat ourselves up, we reproach ourselves, and we start again only to find that our mind wanders again. Who's found that sometimes? Not always. And you get really focused in prayer and pray for a, quite a long time, focused prayer. It's like, wow, where'd the time go? But at other times, it's like you, it's just, your mind is it's, it's like, man, it's like a budgie. It's just hopping around the cage. And at home, it's worse. Like, that's why I like to come and pray at the church. But uh, it's hard to have a prayer time at home. I find it hard because there's a fridge there. <laughs> and there's a kettle there. And there's a toaster there. And, and, and everything I can... I suddenly have a thought and I can action it because I'm at home. Whereas I have thoughts here, here when I'm in the church in the prayer room. I can't do anything. There's no fridge. There's, there's nothing else to do. Like, oh, that's why I'm praying. <laughs> and so I help in that with distractions. A prayer list can help. And we've got to, again... There's dangers in that, but a prayer list can help keep focus. Pray standing up or walking around, that can really help. Because I don't know about you, if I'm tired and I'm sitting down, it's like, oh, you know. You know open the window, let the freezing cold air in and, and, and wake yourself up. I don't know, but you know, pray aloud really helps you to, it's, you, you notice when you stop praying. <laughs> oh, hang on, there's no noise here. Oh, that's right, it's me, I'm praying, I'm not praying. Seriously, it's like when you get distracted, you've got to take action, you've got to be... Uh, intentional with your prayer. It's like, man, I'm going to commit, I'm going to prioritise, I'm not going to be distracted. Number three, condemnation or feeling unworthy. Who's ever felt that? 
you don't want to pray because you just feel like, oh, God probably doesn't want to listen to me because it's like, oh, oh, you know, we doubt that we've earned credit points with God. We've got, we haven't got enough frequent, frequent prayer points. <laughs> That's good, really frequent prayer points. Um, we, we haven't built up enough to actually, you know, got all this. Or righteous deed points, we haven't done enough good stuff. And, and we can think like that. And we feel like, oh, oh we, we lose confidence. Read the Word of God and read about all the people just like you and me that are really human people with uh, the you know, struggles and then they pray and there's a miracle, not because they were perfect. It says Elijah's a man just like you with the same sort of desires, just like you, but he prayed fervently and God did miracles through his prayer because he believed God, not because he was good. So remember, we're praying in Jesus' name. We're not praying in, in our name. Yes. You know, my name's Pete, so I can say, for Pete's sake, Lord. No, I can't say that. Because God's going to say, for Pete's sake, what? You know, in Jesus' name, okay. Well, Jesus earns the, uh, he earns the points to qualify that God says yes to everything yes. that he asks for. And so if we come in Jesus' name, God can say yes to the things we pray for according to the will of God. Listen to what it says, Hebrews 4.16. This is the Amplified Bible, and this is good. Let us then fearlessly, fearlessly and confidently and boldly. Don't you love the Amplified Bible? The Bible says, let us, that's you, that's me, that's all the Christians, let all of us fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace. I love that scripture. The throne of grace. I'm asking for grace, undeserved favour. I'm asking for God's favour that I didn't earn. And God's saying, you can have it, you don't have to earn it. Draw near the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favour to us sinners, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help for every need. That's a great translation. That's encouraging. Oh, I don't feel worthy. Good. Who cares? Doesn't matter how you feel. It matters that you exercise faith. It matters that you believe what God says to do. And well, I'm going to pray then. He said I can fearlessly, confidently, and boldly. Doesn't sound like I've got a cringe, does it? Doesn't sound like I've got to earn some points here. It just says I've got to open my mouth and say, God, look, um, I need your grace. Uh, I need your mercy and I need your help. And God, in one translation, says that he's so willing to give, so ready and willing to give. It's like, whoa. Number four, the discouragement of unanswered prayer. Who's got some prayers that are still still sort of active there? They haven't been answered yet. And, man, the logic, oh, I prayed about it before. No answer. No change. In fact, it did change, got worse. Um, the situation's bad, and uh, what could you know? Like, you ever felt like that? You ever thought about prayer like that? You ever been discouraged even to pray about that person, that situation? My sister said for years, the more she prayed for me, the worse I got. She almost felt like giving up praying for me because I was getting worse. It's like, oh dear. But Luke 18 1 says, One day Jesus told his disciples a story to show that they should always pray and never give up. Okay, I'll, I'll take on board what he says. We should always pray and never give up. Number five, hindrance to prayer. We got no plan, and if you haven't got a plan, you can pray really short prayers, short prayer meeting. It's like I haven't got anything to pray for. And then when you're thinking and, you, and you'd be anxious for nothing, well, there you go. That's your prayer list of things you get anxious about. No prayer points, no prayer program, no strategy, so we fizzle out after five minutes. Or we try the prayer list strategy and it works for a little while. And then I was reading this one commentator wrote this. In a burst of spiritual enthusiasm, we put together a prayer list to keep our mind on track. However, praying through the list gets boring and nothing seems to happen. We lose track of the many people we're praying for not even knowing whether they still have that need anymore or not. Over time, the list gets longer and longer and we finally drop the list. Who's ever had prayer lists like that? They just get longer and longer. It's, it's like, I can't pray for this. And you just end up reading a list and naming the names. Bob, Sue, Betty, 
Trevor, and you, you can't, and half the people are like, I don't even know these people. I can't remember what the problem was. Like, and so prayer lists can be ineffective. I recommend prayer lists, make a prayer list, but update it, refresh it. You know, don't pray for everything do, 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 through. Don't, don't become mechanical in your prayer life. Use some things to aid and to help and to trigger and to focus you. And God will help you. Number six, we simply fall into a prayer rut because we're saying the same old things day after day after day. Sometimes it can really help pray, read a book on prayer, get some different angles on prayer. You know, study some scriptures on prayer. Re- refresh yourself with regard to prayers, and then sometimes that be, be, we fall into a rut because it's a monologue. We're talking at God, and prayer was really never meant to be a one-way communication. I was reading about the AK-47 assault rifle. There's three settings, and these are you know are indicative of people's prayer lives, um, surprisingly. And um, there's the safe setting. In other words, you pull the trigger and nothing happens. There's some people that don't, they don't pull the trigger. Like they don't pray. They're stuck in safe mode. They think about prayer. They think about issues. They think about, you know, they have wants and desires, but they don't actually pray. They're not, they're not putting wheels on their prayer. There's uh, another one that's full auto. Until the bullets are gone. And people pray like that. They go from one thing to the next, and then, and then usually probably five minutes, and it's like it's all over. So that's it, Lord. That's all I got. <laughs> Ran out of bullets. And uh, God's going, yeah. AK-47 down there at the potter's house. And uh, maybe we can instead pray on semi-automatic three-round bursts. Pray, just pray for a couple of things, and then and then it pauses, like the, the gun itself stops you. It says, hey, well, that'll do. It's just, it's just on semi-automatic, three, three shots and then shut up for a minute. And, and what it is, is you pray about a couple of things and then pause for a second and say, God, do you want to speak to me about that? Or God, do you want to direct me and pray about something else other than what I'm about to pray about? Or God, maybe I should just read. And if you, if you, a bit of, you know, entwine a bit of Bible reading and your Bible reading program, and you can read at random, but it's good to have a, you know, a, a, a program to read through the Word of God. It's like you can just read a little bit of the Word of God, a verse or two, and sometimes, incredibly, there's real connection with what you just prayed, or there's real prompting about what God wants you to pray next, and it makes all the difference. You're waiting for God, and and uh, you know, and then you can pray for an item or two on your prayer list, and then you can wait for God again. And, and it's just a far more effective and fruitful way of praying rather than you're stuck in, uh, you know, safe mode. You, you're blowing all your bullets and, and it's all over. Or um, it's like, oh, I ain't interacting with God. I think that's each wise one. So I want to look thirdly and I want to finish with a couple of things tonight. A couple of practical prayer helps. So first of all, we want to look at Jesus' example. And so just simply as we read about Jesus' life, he prayed about everything. He prayed about definitely about big issues and key things. He's, at his uh, uh, baptism, he prayed at the you know, miraculous feeding of the 5,000 before choosing his 12 disciples. He spent prayer during the night. He went Before he went to the cross, he got up early and prayed. He prayed alone in the wilderness, in secluded places, in the mountains. And uh, even when he was facing the most horrible suffering imaginable, he still left Peter, James and John and went up by himself in the Garden of Gethsemane to be alone with his father and talk to his father about what he was going through with his life. In our text it says, But you, when you pray, go into your room, and when you've shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father who sees in the secret will reward you openly. And I've said this often, but there's something about private prayer. God knows you're not faking it. You're not doing it for somebody else. You're praying because you want to be alone with him. You're praying because you've got real needs and you want to speak to him about it. Jesus prayed uh, often, sometimes for long periods of time. He prayed the whole night in Luke 
chapter 6, he prayed you know, the fourth watch of the night you know, for hours. He prayed early. He prayed uh, with fasting, uh, you know, 40 days, led by the Holy Spirit. He prayed. He fasted. And so what do we learn from the life of Jesus and his prayer life that he prayed about everything? He liked to be alone with God. And Jesus sometimes spent very long periods of time in prayer. And one of the reasons for that, I believe, is because it was a two-way dialogue with the Father. And God spoke to him and God helped him. And uh, I'll talk about that again just in, in a moment's time. And I want to finish with three things that I believe will really help our prayer life. And number one is adopt a game plan for prayer. I've been saying this ongoingly through this message. Have a plan. Work it out. I want to be an effective prayer. How can I do that? Like I said, buy a book on prayer and adopt their game plan. Work out your own game plans. Set aside some time. Set aside a couple of times a day, a couple of places that you go to you can pray that will trigger you and remind you. And just as we uh, you know, develop an exercise plan or an eating uh, program or a you know, healthy diet or whatever, um, you know, we can develop a prayer program and we can have different days for different things for example you know different topics and you know i'm going to pray for world leaders i'm going to pray for world evangelism i'm going to pray for different nations and different situations on different days i'm going to pray for our leaders in our church in our fellowship i'm going to pray for this and that and you can do there's so many i'm going to pray for family for all of my relatives i'm going to pray i know them i know their need i'm going to pray for them i'm going to bind and loose things i'm going to release things in their life by the power that God's given me to speak them uh, into life and through my prayers in Jesus name I'm going to pray for nations, I'm going to pray for the laws that are in uh, place or the laws that are looking to come into place I'm going to pray for people that are sick there's so many topics of prayer and if you'll just write them down and get a few things under those headings you, you don't have to pray for everything every day or maybe you can have a whole you know, spreadsheet of things and just pick the things that, that jump out off the page, whatever Don't use vain repetitions. They think they'll be heard for their many words. Let God be involved. The uh, semi-automatic setting in your prayer um, method. Number one, so adapt or adopt a game plan. Number two, pray using the Lord's prayer. Jesus gives us a template. He didn't give us a prayer to recite or repeat. He gave us a template for prayer. He says this in our text, in this manner. Therefore pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. And so we begin by worshipping, praising God, honouring him, hallowing him. And uh, God's our focus. Prayer, that's, that's a good thing with prayer. God's meant to be the focus. Yes. And you need to remind yourself by starting and finishing with that. Because seriously, sometimes when we're under the pump, when we, we our head's full of anxiety and pressures and all sorts of things, we can begin to pray and we're just talking about all the problems in the world. And we're telling God about the problem. He knows already the problems in the world. He knows more problems than, than you could imagine in the world. He knows the problems in your life. He knows the past, present, and future problems in your life. We're not telling him anything new, but he wants to hear our voice. We're his children, but he also wants us to take a minute to breathe and say, hang on a sec, you're God. The heavens and the earth and all things are in your power and we have a future and a hope. And, and your name, what's, what's God's name referring to? It's talking about his character. It's talking about his power. It's talking about his integrity, his, his honesty. It's, it's talking about his justice. It's talking about who God is. And it reminds us that God's in control and God's good. Amen. goes on, your kingdom come reminds us that it's like there is a time when absolutely everything will be lined up with God's kingdom. That's not quite happening now. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so what we need to do is pray for the nations and pray for our neighbour and pray for our spouse and pray for everyone else. And God, make them all do your will. Help them to do your will. And also we need to pray for ourselves. God, you've got to help me. And, and allow the Holy Spirit to speak to you about your attitudes, about our will versus his will. You ever found yourself praying and you're praying your will into existence and you get a check in your spirit, it's like, I don't think it's God's will at all. Mm-hmm. Invite his will into your life. Give us this day our daily bread. That's a bit different than praying for about a million dollars in superannuation. 
this day, just today. It's like, yeah, well, yeah, I don't, don't get me wrong, get some super going, whatever, but what about today? Your job, your finance, provision, what about some other people? The daily bread, there's poor people around the place. What about our giving today? And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And so we need to confess sin. We need to take time and pray about, you know, confess some stuff that maybe happened today or what we did or maybe sit in the presence of God. I, can't, I don't think, think I've done anything wrong for a long time. So like, well, just sit, sit with the Holy Spirit for a minute and ask him and let him speak to you. Not so you condemn, but so that he can help you. As we forgive others, that's a powerful part of our prayer. Search me, God. Do I need to forgive somebody? Do I need to forgive somebody again? You've got to forgive the same people more than once sometimes because you get the same resentment or, or bitterness or anger or hatred or whatever seems to rise up again. I thought I forgave them. Well, you did. You've got to forgive them again. You need to speak to God about that during your prayer time. You're before the creator of all things. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We can draw near to God and uh, resist the devil and talk to God about problem areas of temptation. It can, I'm not talking about it doesn't necessarily have to be some major, major, some big, bad, heinous type of sin. It can be, uh, you know, it, it can be, but it, it might be just that uh, you, you, you like to eat too much or you, know, you like to talk too much or you... You know, you, you're a little bit stingy, or there's, there's a thousand things, and, uh, and 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 maybe ask God to help you to show you, but also ask God, look, I know I've got a problem in this area, it's an area of temptation for me, and it may not be a big thing, it may even maybe a big thing, but it's like it's not good, and we need to resist the devil. We also can bind the devil in his assault in that arena of life. Oh, he's trying to tempt me in this, I'm going to resist that. God's given me a, a way out, the Bible says. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We're part of the winning side. It's our Father. That's who that's we're talking about there. Yes. He's got the power. He's got the glory forever. Yes. Forever. Not for a week, not for a month. You see the politicians and the, you know, lots of people are successful in life. And I, I'm, I don't mind if people are successful. God, God bless them. Good on them. But the fact is it doesn't last. But God is successful forever and ever and ever and ever. He who is in us is greater than every and any and anything else. And the Bible says nothing can separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. No power on earth, no power in heaven, no, no angel, no demon. Nothing can separate us from who he is and he's glorious and he's glorious forever. There's a bigger picture. Take a step back from your life for a second. I've just prayed about all the things that give me angst and we should pray about all the things that give us angst. I'm praying about all the things that bring me to my knees and cause me to weep before God you should pray about all those things I'm praying about all the things that are wrong in the world and I'm, I'm praying all those things and God wants to remind you at the end of your prayer sit down for a minute and say God's going to bring a glorious thing there'll be no more sin there'll be no more suffering there'll no, be no more sickness there'll be no more shame there'll be no more fear none of these things will exist anymore and this is who God is and we're just a little blip in the in a moment of time a little puff that appears for a moment of gas and then it's gone and it's like then there's something glorious happening and we need to remind ourselves when we pray that it's like ah, I can go to sleep now I can face the day now it's okay it's okay there's victory in Jesus Christ and I want to close and thirdly say we can pray using scripture we can pray using scripture and say God you said in your word well, just like so and so, just like Elijah, he prayed and that happened. Just like Moses, that happened. Just like Joseph, you turn it for good, you meant it for good. God, I'm, I'm, I'm believing what you said. You, you promised to work all things together for good for those who love you and are called according to your purpose. I'm called according to your purpose. I love you. That's for me. And uh, I'm believing you're going to make good come out of this situation right now. And we can pray the scripture. I want to read this out for you. Some commentator wrote this. I really like this. So how is Jesus able to hear the Father speak so well when we have such trouble hearing his voice? And we do sometimes have trouble hearing God's voice clearly, the will of God, and clearly what God would say to us. And the commentator goes on and says, I believe the answer lies in large measure due to who he is. Jesus was and is the sinless, perfect Son of God. And God the Son. 
because there was absolutely no sin in his life. He could hear the Father's voice with no hindrances at all. Sin separates us from God. One of the things it does, it brings a bit of static to the line. Are you breaking up, Lord? Oh, you've gone completely. That was us. That was our connection. It was blocked from our side. And because there's no sin in his life, he could hear the Father's voice with no hindrance. Because we're broken by sin, we sometimes have a difficult time. We do hear from God. Thank God for that. And I believe we can become more and more sensitive. And as we deal with sin, we can become a purer and cleaner vessel and God can deposit into our life more easily. Um, but this uh, guy goes on and he says, we're broken by sin. We sometimes have a difficult time knowing the Father's will and hearing his voice. And I believe that's why God's graciously given us his word in a book. His word is perfect and God speaks to us clearly through the scriptures. That helps us. We can clearly find things in the scripture and know his will. And that's one way we can have a two-way dialogue of prayer with the Father. We read the word of God. And uh, God speaks to us. And then we respond um, back to him in prayer. And so adopt a game plan, a time, a place, a prayer list, a book. Number two, pray using the Lord's Prayer. Pray through that as a template, as a, a manner in which we can pray. And number three, pray using scripture. Which scripture? Well, we can learn some scriptures. We can look up some scriptures. There's a Bible promise book out there. It's got topical scriptures. You can just have a Bible reading program and read where you're up to today and, and God will speak to you. God will help you and you can talk to him about the scripture. And uh, seriously, God's, uh, God wants to have a relationship with us. Let's bow our heads for a moment tonight before God. And as your prayer life. God wants to help you. God wants to meet you in your prayer closet. Where is that anyway? Just when you're, you're alone, when you're still yourself, just speak to him. God wants to meet with you. God wants to help you. He wants you to remind you who he is. He wants you to talk about the issues of your life, but not just the, what you want him to do, but what do you want me to do? What, what do I need to do here? I've got areas there's temptation. I've got areas there's, there's maybe unforgiveness. or Maybe I've blown it. I need some help. And we can talk to God about all those arenas of life. And it's so helpful. He can speak to us. And he'll speak to us through the Word of God, all those areas of life. I'm going to give you an opportunity quickly. You're here tonight and you're not a Christian. You're not living for Christ. He knows you. He loves you. He died on the cross for you. Why did he do that? Because our sin separates us from God the Father. And Jesus came to die in our place to take the penalty for our sin. He did it. He was sinless, but he took our sin upon himself. And rose from the dead on the third day. And we can receive Christ and be forgiven. I want to invite you to pray a prayer. Jesus is God, come as a man. There's no other name God's given by which a man or a woman can be saved is through Jesus because he died for our sin. He took away our sin. He wants to come and live with you and live inside of you by the Holy Spirit. He wants to teach you his ways. He wants to help you in your life. He wants to take you to heaven because when you don't have sin, you can go to heaven. Because heaven's a perfect place with no sin. You've got to have your sin removed before you get there. Jesus takes away our sin. And it's by choice. It's by free will. By the opportunity of God. And tonight you'd like to receive Jesus as your Saviour, as your Lord. And uh, you'd like to do that. You pray a real simple prayer tonight. Count it a joy, a privilege to pray with you tonight. Anybody at all, that's you. Oh, I need Jesus. I'm here on Wednesday night. I need Jesus in my life and I don't have him. And the Bible says there's a place where people, they know who he is, but he's on the outside and he's knocking on the door of their life. He's knocking on the door of their heart. He's knocking on the door to get back inside. Because he wants relationship. And maybe tonight that's you. You're not right with God. You've never been a Christian. Not living as a Christian. Maybe you've just backslidden and shut the door in his face. But you want to get right with God. You want to make a fresh commitment to Christ. You want to pray a prayer. Anyone tonight that's you. You can lift your hand. That's me, Pastor. I want to get right with God. I need him. I need his love, I need his forgiveness. 
maybe attending online, I want to pray with you tonight. You've heard what I've said. You can pray this prayer right now, and I encourage you to repeat this prayer. Father God, I thank you. You sent your son, Jesus, for me. I confess that I am a sinner. But I believe Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And I receive right now forgiveness of sin. I turn from my sin and I turn to you, Jesus. Teach me your ways. Come into my life as my Saviour and as my Lord. Amen. And I encourage you, you can talk right now to him. You don't have to learn any tricky prayers. You can converse with him. Just speak to him. He loves you. He's a father you never had. He's, he's, he's got ears to hear. And he wants to speak to you by his Holy Spirit. He's speaking to you already. He's speaking to you through this sermon. He wants a relationship with you. And no one can stop you. You can pray anywhere, anytime. You can have a relationship with God. I want to open the order. I want to invite you to come and spend some time in prayer. How's your prayer life? I pray it's good. I pray it's going to get better. I pray God's given you some refresher or given you something tonight to help in that. And I want to encourage you to come and pray. And you can pray about your prayer life. You can pray for some people. You can pray and talk to God. You can ask Him some questions. You can confess some things. There's no end to what you can pray about tonight. But can I ask you to do one thing, and that's to be specific. Be real. Be specific with God. He knows all about us, but he wants to hear it from us. He's a father with a child. He wants to hear from his child what's upsetting them. He wants to hear from uh, uh, his child the confession that, yep, I got that wrong. He wants to hear us speak. There's something powerful about words, about when we speak to God, about relationship. The altar's open. I invite you to come and spend some time in prayer.
personal witness to God. Thank you, Lord. Wonderful God. How's your prayer life? Wonderful God. Thank God. I pray that that would be a maybe a refresher course. Maybe that would inspire somebody with something that uh, we've heard from the Word of God tonight. Something out of that will help you in your prayer life. That's my prayer tonight. Appreciate that. We just pray for Dee. Um, Jeff just had to take a blood pill. She's got issues. She's got caution read, but she's not well. So can we just pray for her? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Let's pray for B. She's just um, she had really, really bad tonsillitis, and obviously it's um, it's not good at all. So let's take a moment. Let's let's pray for. Her. Let's lift her up before God. Father, we come in oh, Jesus' name. Thank you, God, that you are a healer, Lord God. Father, even right now, Lord God, you change God's strong mind, Lord God, and bring all the strength. God, that you bring breakthrough and healing, Lord We are with you, Lord God. Be strong, Lord God. We pray for you, healing, God. Lord, Wonderful God, thank you, Jesus. I just want to uh, invite you, remind you to um, press in the next couple of days um, in prayer. We're just really focusing this week. Um, breaking the power of the enemy, uh, the opposition that's come, seeing breakthrough specific areas of our life, and uh, we're giving ourselves to being passionate about our prayer life and drawing near to God. The devil flees, we draw near, and uh, there's breakthrough in prayer. I encourage you to do that. If you're able to fast um, as well as pray, I encourage you to do that tomorrow if you like, Friday uh, as well. We're going to uh, meet at the Leggett's place at uh, 6 o'clock and spend just an hour in prayer. And uh, I believe that's going to be a powerful time. It's going to be a good scene. And I uh, appreciate you coming out tonight. Praise God. We're going to close off in prayer. And uh, praise God. Great to see you in church. Be it, Marcus, to pray. Thanks, Marcus. Lord God, we do thank you for the uh, privilege, uh, the power of prayer. And we thank you for this message tonight. We ask you to bless as we go. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you.